Are you ready? Okay. Uh, okay, so we are glad to have Anton Milit from University of Vienna. The title is on the screen. Curious hard left its property for character varieties and Lina will uh, post uh, his slides, Anton's slides in the chat. Okay, Anton, please. Um, thank you. Um, by the way, um, feel free to use your videos so that I can see your faces and uh, uh, re react accordingly <laughs> when I'm saying some nonsense, for instance. Um, right, and feel free to interrupt. So um, the title is Curious Hardlevshitz Property for Character Varieties. I have two parts. One is background and motivation, and part two is, is um, the construction, the main result. Okay, so, so let's see. So we have, uh, we start with uh, everything lives on the surface, a surface of genus G with K boundary components. And um, so we denote the boundary components as one up to SK. So, our surface. And then another thing we need, we fix n. And uh, we just pick the general linear group of size n. Uh, the um, g modular center will be denoted pg, the pgln. And, and then we also fix conjugacy classes, uh, one conjugacy class for each boundary component. And with this data, we can define uh, the character stack, which is uh, uh, here. So, so uh, XB is the character stack. It parameterizes uh, homomorphisms from the fundamental group to our group G. And uh, such that each uh, boundary component is sent to the corresponding conjugacy class. And this is all viewed up to uh, the conjugation by the PG group, by the group PGLN. So um, there is an equivalent description uh, using matrices. So this XB parameterizes two G plus K tuples of matrices in G, uh, such that this product of commutators. And then, uh, so you have G commutators, and then you have K matrices corresponding to the boundary components. The product must be one, right? This is coming from the description of the fundamental group of Sigma. And, and this uh, MIs are restricted to, to the corresponding conjugacy classes. And again, all this is up to the conjugation by by G or uh, by PG. So B stands for Betty, yeah? Yeah, B stands for Betty. There are other versions of this space. Okay, very good. So now I need to tell you some, for um, to be precise, I have to impose some assumptions. Uh, so, um, the conjugacy classes are assumed to be semi-simple, which means they are represented by diagonal matrices. And you should think about this conjugacy classes as follows. You fix the multiplicities. So some eigenvalues can repeat. And then, but the values of the eigenvalues are still chosen, can be still chosen, and they are assumed to be chosen, chosen generically. If you want, you can think about it naively. Generically means some just random things without any, any conditions. But if you want some more precise version, one more precise condition, then I want that, um, oh, I forgot here that the product of determinants of CI are equal to one. So, um, 
this is certainly a necessary condition for any homomorphism to exist. Uh, because if you look at this condition, at the um, at this condition, uh, taking determinants imposes that uh, implies that product of determinants of m's must be equal to one, and that's why we have this this condition. And then. Um, and genericity means that, okay, this is a little bit technical. So if you choose any number m between zero and the total dimension, and if you choose arbitrary sub multi sets of the eigenvalues of ci, so of size m, then the product of, of the values should be not equal to one. So this condition guarantees that our local system cannot have a sublocal system because if it had such a sublocal system, then the determinant condition would be violated. Okay, so, so this is pretty standard in this business, this genericity assumption. And for instance, if you read papers by Hausel, Letelier, uh, Rodriguez, Vegas, and they will we have this assumption. So, and as I said, so all um, representations of the fundamental group satisfying this conditions condition are irreducible. And this will imply in its terms that the proposition that that under this assumption, XB is a smooth affine variety. So it's not it's not a stack anymore, it is just a variety, moreover it is smooth, it's a manifold. Okay, is it clear? Yes, yeah, so far. Okay. Yeah, so here is a very, uh, the, the example that everybody uh, usually brings up, the so-called baby case. So this baby case will participate in many, as a, as a main example in many things we are going to do. And this is genus zero. So it's just the sphere. You have four punctures or four boundary components. Um, and the rank is two. Then it is uh, computed by Fricke that the character variety is this affine, affine variety. Um, so it's given by X, Y, Z with a single equation of degree three, which begins with X, Y, Z plus some lower order terms. So you can think about it geometrically as a, a fine cubic surface where you removed a triangle at infinity. The coefficients no. are integer or what? No, no, they depend on the eigenvalues. Okay. For, for um, but if you don't care what they are, they're generic, then this will be pretty generic coefficients. Okay. So the next uh, step is to, yeah, so what do we want to do with this, um, with these spaces, which I denoted MB. Um, okay, here it is denoted by XGK. So this is just as MB. Um, okay. So what we want to do, we want to understand its cohomology. For instance, we want to compute Poincare polynomials. We want to understand some extra structures on the cohomology, and we want to understand the ring structure in potentially in cohomology. So, um, so what this um, people did, how the little and Rodriguez Vegas, they computed the number of points on this space over FQ. Of course, uh, the way I, I said it, it doesn't make sense. I have to say that because my variety was a variety over complex numbers. But if you look closely, for instance, if the eigenvalues are some algebraic numbers, you will obtain that the character variety is defined over an algebraic number field. 
and then you can reduce this number field. Um, you can pass to the model over the ring of integers, and then you can reduce it model of prime numbers. So it does make sense to take something model uh, to take these equations model of prime numbers or an extension of Q. And what they found is that this number is polynomial in Q. So for instance, in the baby case, the formula will be, will give us Q squared plus four Q plus one. For instance, you, you know that this is a cubic surface. So on average, it will, like at large, it will have approximately Q square points. And that's why I have Q square and then correction terms for Q plus one. Okay. So is it known mechanically that it's sort of for always polynomial of the left shots motif if you take it? Well, this is, uh, I think it is a question for you. I didn't look at it with you. Mm. Okay, let's proceed. So, um, so if, um, right. So there is some remark that, so what is, what is the meaning of this? What is the geometric meaning of this polynomial? Q squared plus four Q plus one. So if you have, if XK, XJK was a projective, it's already smooth. If it was more of a projective variety, then this polynomial would be the Poincare polynomial. So if, if variety is smooth and projective and if number of point is, points is given by a polynomial, then this polynomial is the Poincare polynomial. For instance, for the projective space, the counting polynomial is one plus Q, et cetera, plus Q to the N. And this is also the Poincare polynomial, except that we are taking the variable, not Q, but square root of Q. Okay. So, but so, our- So the cohomology has the other degrees vanishing? Or? Yes, yes, because the odd, odd cohomology is vanishing and we just renormalize it to only care about even points. So, okay. um, but in this, in our case, XGK is not a um, projective variety. So, what is this polynomial? What does it count? So, for that, I have to explain a little bit about the weight filtration. So, the lean constructed um, on any cohomology of any algebraic variety over C, canonical weight filtration. So think about it as something given by God. Um, what we know about it, so this is a filtration, it looks like this. So the uh, ice cohomology is filtered by uh, W0, which is so it's a W0, then W1, and so on, up to W2i. So let's denote the um, graded, the associated graded by this gr w j i. And then, um, so one thing you can say is that this gr w j, if you fix j, fix the weight, then it behaves like a cohomology theory of algebraic varieties for each j. For instance, you have some long exact sequences and, and things like that. Okay, so I think this is one way to formulate a lot of properties of, of this, uh, of this filtration in one sentence. <laughs> Another property is that if your variety was smooth and projective, then uh, this weight, weight filtration is trivial. So just everything is concentrated in single weight equal to the cohomological degree. So, so this, the last two things already, um, if you know in the right tools, you can compute cohomologies, compute weight, this associated graded for the weight filtration. You have to somehow express the cohomology of your space in terms of cohomologies of smooth and projective varieties. So next, so um, 
Another thing is that somehow this weight filtration explains uh, the point counting. In particular, if if a number of points is a polynomial of Q, then this polynomial co coincides with something which is called E polynomial and defined as follows. So um, don't worry about this normalization on the left. You can see that what I did, I just took the Euler characteristic of, of uh, this GRW for each J and I multiplied it by Q to the J over two. So if you have sequence of cohomology series, we can take Euler characteristic in any of them and get a number. Now you get the numbers, that, that's the polynomial. So what happens in this, um, what happens in this baby case, but P1 with four punctures, the cubic surface. So I, I draw this picture. So in this picture, um, dots correspond to one dimensional, uh, one dimensional spaces. So just convenient visualization. So, so you have H zero is one dimensional uh, as, as, as always. And H two is five dimensional, but this five are split as four plus one. So there is four dimensional piece and there is one dimensional piece. And this four dimensional piece correspond to W two. So two is this two of the cohomology. So if our variety was a projective, then H2 would be equal to W2. But it's not projective. So we also have this W4 and in H2, and this is also one dimensional. So that's the, how you can uh, visualize the information. And if you count points, um, so H0 contributes Q square. Now think about H0 is, is the number of irreducible components, right? Of, of, um, of connected components. So you see that here it is equal, um, each connected component contributes Q, Q to the dimension points. So uh, here we see it's Q square. And then the other pieces contribute uh, um, some corrections. So this is like uh, W2 for Q and then this one con contributes one. So you see that our E polynomial, uh, it's not the Poincaré polynomial because we are reading it not by rows, but by diagonals. Okay, so the weight is read by diagonals in such pictures. Okay, next. Um, next slide. If X is not smooth, oh, so then it's not a compact, are you taking the cohomology with a compact support? Or? Right, yes, yes, yes. If you want, um, so things are a little bit some, sometimes easier if you talk about compact supported cohomology, then you don't have to invert Q and the statement is true for non-smooth varieties too, as well. Okay. okay. And if it is smooth and compactly supported, cohomology is dual to the cohomology. Mm -hmm. um, my internet got, got uh, a problem. Just yeah, we can hear you well. Oh. But my, uh, yeah, I don't know, something happened to my tablet. I cannot. Okay, sorry. I have to reconnect. Mm, you can ask a question while I'm doing that. What 
is this? Okay, I need to reconnect the Wi-Fi. Somehow the problem is just on my tablet. And the very last resort, you can uh, read it from your yeah, tablet yeah. and people will change slides according to your instructions. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let me check that internet is working. Okay, now connect to Zoom. Oops. Uh, there is a question. Can the Q count be expressed in terms of Frobenius operator? Well, uh, the, uh, when we have, when the number of points is a polynomial in Q, this corresponds to if Frobenius acts just by Q, by powers of Q. So it's not so interesting. But yeah, so in general, the weight filtration is compatible with um, with Frobenius in the way that uh, the weight indicates the size, absolute value of the eigenvalue. Okay, let's um, One last try. Really weird. Can you let me in or is it somehow closed? to do it the other way. So share screen. Okay, now can you see my screen? Yes. Yes? Mm -hmm. Can yeah, you see my, yeah, my pointer yeah. as well? Yes. Yes. The only thing is that, again, I don't see, let me, I don't see the full screen because it's somehow. Yeah, it looks, it look, it looks his display larger so he can move up down. It's much easier to read this way. Oh, now I, 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 it's not, it's, I think you see full screen. I didn't open the whole so You thing. can move, yeah, yeah, that look, this looks good. Looks very yeah, good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, can you see now? Let's see. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it works. So, um, okay. So smooth projective, okay, where was I? Okay, here. So, um, right, so, so what did um, Hauser, Letelier, and Rodriguez Villegas do? They, uh, uh, there is a formula, explicit generating function formula for the E polynomials of all character varieties. All character varieties of the type that I consider. So they counted points over finite fields and then, um, since they get polynomials in Q, these polynomials are E polynomials. The way they count over finite fields involves character theory of GLN of Q. 
And so in particular, the formula, connect, uh, um, the formula contains some um, modified Schur polynomials. Uh, and then the, the conjecture, oops, oops. Um, the conjecture formula for the two variable deformation of the uh, of the C polynomial, which is we call mixed Hodge polynomials of XB. So this, um, if E polynomial only contains information about the weight filtration, the mixed Hodge polynomial contains both weight filtration and the cohomological degree. So one way to package this information, you see, the information is uh, this. Uh, dimensions of H i W j, and we package it with some monomials in Q and T. This is some particular choice of of uh, bookkeeping, which is my non-standard notation, and it's convenient for the formulas to be nice later. Okay, so let's see what it does in the baby case. So we have this picture where we have. Uh, one dimensional H0 and four dimensional W2H2 and one dimensional W4H2, uh, grr, W4H2, sorry. And, and then uh, the T weight grows in, in the direction in the right, the right, and Q weight goes down. And it begins with one in the left, right, in the left top corner. So these four guys give me four and then I get Q and T. So the total uh, mixed Hodge polynomial is four plus Q plus T. And you will see later why this is convenient to, to write it with this choice of variables. So by the way, in Havana homology business, there is also some natural choice of variables and some unnatural, but which is as nice formulas. So this is similar here. Okay, so uh, I want to make a few remarks. So how did they get the formula? So they uh, found the formula for the E polynomial and they cleverly found a way to replace the modified Schur polynomials by the modified McDonald polynomials. It's well known that, that modified McDonald polynomials are some uh, polynomials depending on two parameters that specialize to the modified Schur at t equals q inverse. So we get a corresponding identity. Uh, so they proved that the conjectural formula for the mixed Hodge polynomials evaluated at q, q inverse. Uh, right, so, 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 um, so in general, the E polynomial has earlier characteristic uh, of in each weight of the cohomology will be equal to this specialization of the mixed Hodge polynomial. And they prove this specialization. Okay. So um, this appearance of McDonald polynomials hints on the connection to, to the Hilbert scheme of C2. And indeed uh, the formula you can interpret in a straightforward way as certain index of some uh, equivalent vector bundle on the Hilbert scheme. Yeah, but on on the baby example, I mean, is there but any? Of course, yeah, it's not trivial to get the actual polynomials from the formula. I mean, there is something, and then you have to take logarithm of some generating function. So, right, you know it very well. Well, another feature of the formula is that if you set t equals zero, then McDonald polynomials become half whole Littlewood polynomials. And this formula they have specializes to the well-known Huas formula, which um, computes Katz polynomials. So these are polynomials that compute in decomposable representations of quivers. Then spelling of Katz is incorrect. It's a different Katz this oh, one yes, is, re is yes. related to right. polynomial count, but the yeah, yeah, yeah. it's Victor I, Katz. Yeah, this is Nico Katz. Okay, so this is... No, 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 no. no. no now it's Victor. Victor Katz with C. 
Oh, this is a V. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, my That's a C. Mm -hmm. So, so, um, and and the furthermore, that um, it is known that cas polynomials are also Poincaré polynomials of Nakajima varieties. Mm -hmm. um, so in our baby case, if you say t equals zero, then we only left with this uh, with this part. We have to throw away the W4 part here. So we get the polynomial Q, Q plus four, and this is indeed the Katz polynomial for this extended Binkin D4 quiver. So Anton, I'm confused a bit at this point because you are talking about character varieties, yeah? Mm -hmm. Which are not, in general, they are not quiver varieties, they are multiplicative quiver varieties. In general. No, 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 no. So there is a, given the data, that uh, of a variety, there is a way to to draw a quiver. You have to put some uh, legs, so chains of vertices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can take yeah, you can take legs as you wrote like CP CP one with four or five points. In in your picture, it's four points. But mm -hmm. what do you do next with the quiver in order to get the character variety? No, the, so um, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that in one way, if you have a um, character variety, then you can produce a quiver, and that, for that quiver you. But but you don't have you don't get all quivers, right? Okay. Okay. So uh, so we get that the cohomology of Nakajima quiver variety of this of the special some special quivers. Uh, equals to the pure part of the cohomology of the character variety. And so in a sense, if you are interested in Nakajima queer varieties, then you see that the character variety contains strictly more information than Nakajima variety. Okay. So more remarks. Um, so um, so Schiffman uh, computed the Poincaré polynomials of, of character varieties. So he did it without punctures. Uh, there is some version of character variety uh, without punctures. Um, so remember that how the Letelier Rodriguez Villegas computed this E polynomial, which is T equals Q inverse specialization. The Poincaré polynomial is T equals one. Realization. In other words, we read our table by rows. And then I uh, verified that Schiffman formula matches with Hauser Letelier Rodriguez Vegas formula by, in specialization, not only for case without punctures, but also the case with punctures. So, okay, so this is just another verification of the conjecture. But the main thing we want to talk about is the symmetry between Q and T. So if you look at, at the, our baby picture, then you see that the picture is symmetric with respect to the diagonal. Here is the diagonal. And this results in our mixed Hodge polynomial being symmetric in Q and T. And this is some um, I mean, it's interesting thing that follows from the from the conjecture. And what is the explanation of it? So, um, so the authors observed that the E polynomials, which are just polynomials in Q, are polyndromic. So remember that the polynomial in Q was obtained by reading these the diagonals, summing up in the diagonals, and uh, you see that. Symmetry implies that the polynomial is polyndromic. So they were wondering what is the explanation of this polyndromicity of the e-polynomial. If you know, usually if you see a polynomial which is polyndromic, then you want to uh, interpret it as a Poincaré polynomial of some topological space, compact um, topological manifold. And then by Poincaré duality, you will get uh, the polyndromicity. But our polynomial is not the Poincaré polynomial. 
So that's why it is called, so that's why this, the, the word curious. And they were suggesting maybe there is some curious Poincare duality, which uh, pairs up not the cohomological degrees, but the weights. Then, um, yeah, so the Cataldo, Hauser, and Mignorini uh, computed some other moduli space, um, the Dolbo moduli space, and there you have, they found this perverse filtration on the cohomology, and that perverse filtration, so, so there was symmetry with respect to the perverse filtration. And so the another candidate for the explanation is curious hard Lefschetz explanation of the symmetry. And so what do they say is that if you have perverse relative hard Lefschetz, so you have, I mean, sorry, you have perverse relative hard Lefschetz uh, on the, the Dolbo side. If you have also so-called P equals W conjecture, then this together would imply curious hard Lefschetz. I will say what curious hard Lefschetz is more precisely a little bit later. This is just an overview part. Okay, so, so there were two indications for the curious hard Lefschetz so far. One from formula, another from P equals W. So next thing, uh, let's discuss some I want some parallels to Hovana-Vorzanski homology of links. So these parallels are really abundant. So one thing is that is similar. Remember that before setting t equals q inverse, we got some kind of simpler invariant, which was, which was easier to compute. The same happens here. Uh, if you set t equals q inverse in generating function for one of Rosansky homology of a link, you get home flip polynomial. Home flip polynomial, which can be easily computed by, let's say, I don't know, using Hecke algebra or, or resolving every crossing and so on. So um, another similarity is that you have McDonald polynomials. You have formulas with McDonald polynomials and connections to Hilbert schemes. So this is by uh, Gorski, Negwitz, uh, um, Rasmussen, Oblonk, or many people did this, uh, uh, for instance, for torus links and knots. There were uh, formulas, explicit formulas involving McDonald polynomials. Um, and the third similarity is this QT symmetry. So this is conjectural symmetry for Hoana Frosansky homology. And, and let me just speculate that, so this suggests that we should put the theory of character varieties next to link homology and include it in some more, some kind of unified theory that treats both in the, somehow, includes both the special cases. And, and then physics, um, so I want to point out this John Diokonescu, Donagi Pantio, they, uh, some, using some string theory considerations, they introduce wild character varieties. So this is somehow merging character varieties and torus links. So it's not arbitrary links. You can have torus. So, uh, do you mean that if you consider, for example, um, the irregular uh, say meromorphic connections on the curve. Yeah. Uh, so, and if you kind of apply the Riemann Hilbert, so then you have sort of a constructible shifts with prescribed micro local support. This is, will be your bigger yeah. the unified theory. Yes, yes, yes. But in this way, if you have a meromorphic part of a connection, you only get algebraic links. Uh, so there is some problem. I, I I don't know. Are you sure? I th I think that at infinity I will I can get any Legendrian. Le I mean, not an arbitrary, but Legendrian links. Yeah. Yeah, but it's not. Can if you can get them on Betty side, but it's not clear how to pass them to the other side, right? Which one, the other? 
Дальбо. Мироморфик Хиггс Бандл. Мироморфик Полар Парк это всегда алгебраик функция, да? Я имею в виду, это функция, но... О, да, я понимаю, что ты говоришь. Это какие-то... Я думаю, что это не совсем полностью. Да, 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 я согласен. Окей, так вот, это был обзор на тему. Relative to my talk, I mean it's not complete overview, of course. So uh, now let's talk about the main topic: is the cell decompositions. So first, what I, do I mean by a cell decomposition? So if I have an algebraic variety, let's say over complex numbers, and let's say I have a finite poset, then I, a stratification is a map from X. From points of x to the poset, such that um, every for every point in the poset, the set of points which go below alpha, so for every alpha in the poset, the set of points go below alpha is the Risky clause. Okay, so you can think about it as as some collection of the Risky clause subsets which are organized in some way. And by Uh, my um, lack of education, I call it cell decomposition because um, um, usually cell decomposition is more restrictive, but usually it's called stratification, I guess. Anyway, so if you have such a thing that then you, you have a finite poset, everything is mapped to this poset, so you can take pre image of an element of a poset. This is some subset of X. These subsets are locally closed, and we call them cells, or strata, more appropriately. Okay. So, I mean, if you like, you can make, choose a linear uh, order on the poset, a complete linear order, and then you just get a sequence of closed subsets, increasing sequence of closed subsets. So, it's just that, Keeping the poset in mind gives a little bit more structure. Okay, so, so associated to such uh, stratification, we can use the idea of some induction. We can somehow try to understand the cohomology of the whole thing from cohomologies of the of cells. And here, this is the description of the induction step. Sorry, I missed. Uh, they are cells, or they are just a strata. If you think cell is something contractible, then they are not cells. Okay, good. But I'm just by using language, I think about them as something simple. That's why I like to call them cells. Okay. So, um, so choose. Let's suppose I is an upper ideal of P. Then uh, it corresponds to an open subset. Because the complement is lower ideal and, and corresponds to um, closed sets. So, and suppose choose a maximal element outside of i. So we can then add this maximal element to i and make i a little bit bigger. And in this way, we can obtain start from empty ideal, get everything. That's our. Um, So then, so this I prime is a new bigger ideal. And it's called. It's also upper ideal, and um, the complement of U I in U I prime is a closed set, which is a cell sigma inverse I. So it's not closed in X, but it's closed in in the in U I prime in the open set. So this is a picture. So we have. Small open set, bigger open set, and the complement is a closed set, mm, the alpha. And then we have, if we apply compact supported cohomology, then we get this kind of exact sequence. And you see that if you know the alpha, if you know ui, the alpha and ui, you can try to get u i prime, the cohomology of u i prime. So it's increasing induction. Or if you are 
if you like pure cohomology, then you can work with relative cohomology. It's basically the same, but dual. So you can, um, yeah, this is a sequence in relative cohomology. And if you know, right, in relative cohomology, if everything is smooth, then ui prime modulo ui is the same as the alpha up to a shift of weight. So you know this, and so you know this, you know this, you know this, you know this, then you get this. So from ui prime, you get ui. So it's decreasing induction. OK. Um, well, right. So this is this was some prerequisite about um, self decompositions. And what is this curious quadratures? Uh, so, so more generally, x will be, of course, our character variety, but more generally, x is some smooth variety. Omega is close to form, holomorphic, I mean, algebraic to form, for instance. Yeah, algebraic to form. And you consider the class of this form. It's an element of H2. And if you remember that for the weight filtration, W4 is always, exhaust, always exhausts the whole H2. So there is in particular element in group W4 of H2. So we say that curious hard Lefschetz holds with middle weight D, D is some number, E even. It holds if the following two things hold. Uh, so first, we assume that all weights in the cohomology of X are even. And second thing, we assume that uh, omega, multiplication by omega, gives an isomorphism in complementary weights. So if we take G's, J's power of omega, remember that omega has weight 4, then it will be, it will go from group D minus to J to group D plus to J. And the condition is that this is isomorphism. So you do not assume any behavior of W on the set of, on the degenerate locus here. It gives a symplectic structure on the open uh, here subset. I assume it's smooth. But the same, if you want to generalize this definition, I would suggest to use compactly supported cohomology and instead of omega, talk about classes in cohomology. So you don't lose anything. Cohomology X on compactly supported cohomology by multiplication, and then you will get you want to consider the same condition. Okay. So, and why it turns out that cell decompositions nicely are nicely compatible with, with this condition. Namely, if so this is my lemma. If you have X with open and closed subsets, Z is complement to U, and suppose that curious hard Lefschetz holds for U. So the form is on X, okay? But suppose curious hard Lefschetz forms on U with the restriction of the form and on Z with corresponding middle weights. There is some shift in Z. Then you can conclude that it holds on X. Okay? And and one example, which will be our, which, which this is what will happen for character varieties. Here's an example. So if X admits a cell, I mean certification with strata of the form like this. So we have a torus and a fine space. And each time, so D is fixed. So each time the dimension of torus drops by two, you must have one extra C. So the, if this, this holds, and suppose that the restriction of the form omega 2 to each cell is uh, just the pullback, just the log canonical form in the coordinates on C star. So equivalent is a pullback of a non degenerate log canonical symplectic form from C star D minus 2i. So it doesn't depend on the parameters in CI at all. Um, so if, if this holds, the form is non-degenerate, then we get curious hard for this space, for these cells, and, this, and consequently, by the lemma, 
for the whole space. Okay, so this is what will happen. And then how do we construct this? Um, so let's see, this is my... So actually, actually uh, sorry, actually, I mean, on your previous slide, maybe this is also happens for your generalized uh, theory, which you kind of included. Yes. Yeah. yeah, because yeah. you you take just some uh, Lagrangian normal Lagrangian, take a rank one local system, so you have a torus from the representation of the fundamental group, the C star, and okay. Right. So the point here is that uh, you have some, you usually have some big torus, which is symplectic, right? But you also want the smaller strata also to look like torus times affine space. Okay. Yeah, and and you explain the the origin, yeah, why it admits such pavement, yeah. I'm going to explain how it happens for the okay. character varieties. Okay. So. Um, so the main construction, and if you looked in my paper, cell decompositions uh, on on the archive, then what I'm saying here is a little bit more general version uh, of the construction. So we have a surface sigma. We have some conjugacy classes in G, uh, satisfying some assumptions. But for this, just for this exposition, I assume that CIs are regular. So all of them have distinct eigenvalues. And at least K is at least one. So I will consider different model spaces and operations on them. Uh, so let me explain the language with which I, I construct, how I construct model spaces. So this is uh, it's somehow somewhat generalization of fog of construction. So we will have some pictures. So on the left side, I, I, I uh, drew three different uh, um, primitives for my pictures. Picture will have some vertices, some edges, and some polygons. And they are glued together in the surface. And then there are labels. So on vertices, you can put a subgroup of G, arbitrary subgroup of G. And the meaning of that label is that in the end, after we, when we construct the module space, we will divide by the action of, of the subgroup. So if H is a subgroup, we will divide by H. So the, the answer, the result is some kind of stack. We divide some space by some group. And this means we divide by H. Now, if you have some H connecting two vertices, labeled H1 and H2, and you, so you can put the label Z, which is a H1, H2 invariant subset of G. So H1 is on the left, H2 on the right, and you consider a subset, invariant subset. And the meaning in the construction is that for each H, you associate a variable which runs in this subset Z. And finally, each polygon, if a polygon is labeled by Z1, Z2, Z3, Z4, then there will be a condition on the variables that the product is one in G. So this is pretty intuitive and this is what you expect from local systems, uh, intuitive, right? So I hope there is no much confusion in this language. And, and here is a real description of the original model space for P1 with four punches. So these are my boundary components. These are, um, these are holes. There's nothing inside. So the, uh, and there are vertices on, on the boundary components and all the vertices are labeled by T because this is a structure group at, at the T if you're at the boundary component because you have this chosen conjugacy class. Uh, the structure group is T. Then the edge is selected by G. And, and the, the loops on the boundary, along the boundary are labeled by uh, C, the conjugacy classes. 
And there is one polygon in this picture. This is a complement of the, once you make the cuts along these edges and along, so you remove the boundary components, make cuts, you get a polygon. And so there is one polygon and, and many edges, many four vertices. Okay, so it's pretty clear intuitively that this corresponds to the original model space. And what we do is that we first, we replace T by B. And this is um, um, pretty clear intuitively that the model space doesn't change provided that C's have distinct eigenvalues. Okay. So in the end we have this, after doing this, we have some edges labeled by G, some vertices labeled by V, and we always yeah. prefer B or, or T. Does it in in the Fog Goncharov language mean that you choose a full flag? Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, geometrically that's the meaning. Precisely. Okay. okay, and then we do some operations with these pictures. So if we see an H labeled by G connecting two Bs, then well, these two Bs act on G. So we can just decompose G into orbits, into B B orbits. And there is finitely many orbits parameterized by permutations. So we, the model space is, is then stratified by permutations. And now each stratum, um, uh, so now um, we get things like this B, B, each for, for each stratum, and B, W, B on the edge, in the subset. We will abbreviate B, W, B by W in the future. Okay, next, second operation. So here, for instance, we will decompose, decompose, and we will have just some Ws instead of Gs. What do we, afterward, what do, we do afterwards? So whenever we see BB connected by BWB, and W is some permutation, if we can, for a reducible decomposition of the, reduced decomposition of a permutation as a product of two other permutations, we can split this segment into two segments. Also, it's clear that this doesn't change the model space because this is for, for a reduced product of permutation, we have this property. Okay. So we can uh, decrease length of permutations by, by doing that. And finally, another step, uh, introducing new cores. So if you have any polygon, we can just add a chord with connecting any two vertices and label it by G. This also doesn't change the space because the, the thing sitting on G is forced to be just the product of guys going uh, on the boundary from between the two vertices of the chord. So what do we get in the end? We can always arrive at the triangulated surface such that all triangles are like have labels of two kinds. The first type of triangle is when you just have one H product as it of the other two, uh, and it is a reduced product. Such triangles are not so interesting for us, for us and we call them removable. And the only interesting triangles that can be left are triangle with edges labeled by S, where S is a simple reflection. So, and this is our abelianization theorem, which then implies everything. So, so remember you start with some model space, we correspond to some picture, some surface, and we do this cutting and, um, and so on. And in the end we get many pictures, but each picture has only these two kinds of triangles. So we want to understand what each triangle, how each such, uh, each such um, look like. So um, let Z be a model space obtained via the above procedure. So Z corresponds to, uh, to a triangulated surface where triangles are only of the two types above. What you can do is you can first construct a ramified covering 
of, of the original surface, where for each ramified uh, triangle, you put a simple ramification point and you use the permutations on vertices to glue the surface together. So you get an n-fold covering of sigma. And you can, by passing from uh, B to T, you can you obtain an obvious map from, from the moduli space to the moduli space of just rank one local system on the covering. And the theorem says that this is a homoto homotopy equivalent. So this map, and more, uh, so more, uh, more strongly, it says that there exists some other variety z hat, some other step z hat, such that it is a vector, it, it is a fine bundle over both z and and mb j one. But this procedure of taking a fine bundle does not change the cohomology. So for us, these two spaces are somehow indistinguishable. Mm, okay, and and then uh, this proves that well, um, that the character varieties are chopped into pieces like I said. The C star components come from uh, from the moduli space of rank one local systems on sigma hat. And and then the fact that the form is non-degenerate follows from the fact that um, uh, the H1 form the, so the canonical two form is preserved, matches this map here, this map. There is a canonical form here and here, and the pre-image of this one is this one. And so you get the non-degeneracy statement for the form. So um, yeah, that's all that I wanted to say. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, so now it's time for questions. So you can unmute yourself and ask a question. Can I change to my tablet now? I, I, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, because maybe if I answer a question, I need to write. Uh, yeah, if there will be questions, so people are silent. This kind of <laughs> concerns me. Mm. So let, let me give an example <laughs> of a question. <laughs> so uh, you are uh, curious or whatever, uh, hard left shots, uh, is it something specific for, uh, for character varieties or you can work in this Fock and Goncharov framework, some cluster varieties, they have two types, like X varieties, A varieties, which are full of tori. I think we are kind of interested in different perspectives. If you want to cover your variety by tori, then you could read Fock and Gancharov. No, 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 no. I'm, uh, it's a question about some kind of cohomological consequences for which cluster structure is not sufficient because your uh, strata, they are product of affine spaces and the tori. And in, in cluster story, you have just sort of a lot of tori C star in the, yeah. yeah so well, it's just you different. Cannot, you cannot compute cohomology using cluster, cluster structure. Yeah, that's what I mean, but you can. You can at least yeah. prove some yeah, yeah, at least I get some information out of it. Okay. Anton, can I ask a question yeah, the, the, yeah. about the construction? So yeah. I understood that, you know, uh, you had this picture for this um, sphere with four holes and you cut it, you know, you drew this like, you know, did the cuts. I didn't understand where the elements of the wild group appear, how you would write this, you know, this B, W, yeah. B, so that, that was a little bit confusing because in your like Gauss example, whatever it was, yeah. uh, it doesn't show up. So maybe can you say a few? Yeah, I was a bit too fast with it here. So uh, let's look at this picture. 
right? So this is a picture that, picture that we start with. Now think about it. Every local system on every edge, there will be some element of G. And it will be determined up to left and right multiplication by B. Mm. So you can fix, let's consider a subset where this uh, element is restricted to some orbit, some BB orbit on G. So Brady decomposition would square. Yeah, you, you, you just apply Brady decomposition, and that induces a decomposition of the whole model space. So you're basically saying that you just decompose B, uh, uh, G, B, B by you know, on this orbits, and you know, yeah, there's exactly yeah, yeah. W of those. Mm. Yes. And, uh, but then you kind of refine it. You got these triangles, and but you don't refine it. Like in this case, you just stop, and that's it. No, right? so, no, 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 no. So once after you did this, for instance, you could get uh, um, in rank two. Let's say you have the high, the largest cell. Uh, you are interested in the open cell. Then you will get something. You will get in the polygon. You will have six, six things of the form B, W B. Okay. Mm -hmm. The polygon has six G's on, on the boundaries, on the boundary. And once, so let's say the open, the open stratum, we have this where W is a permutation to one. Okay, now uh, this is still not enough. You have to draw more chords to simplify. So for instance, you can connect mm -hmm. here like this. And so far, you don't know which element. So there's some element of G here. So you put G. So between, from here to here, by multiplying these three matrices, you get some element of G. Equivalently, there are flags sitting in, in the six vertices. And you're comparing these two flags along this edge. And again, you apply the certification. Mm -hmm. Some of, for some of the choices of W, you just get empty set, but right. So it's yeah, you throw them. Yeah, right. I should say you that you throw them, them away, of course. Okay. Mm -hmm. I see, I see. I see. So oh. you can triangulate. For instance, there is a cluster chart of Fog Goncharov. Well, how do you get it? You first triangulate the whole thing, and you put uh, the largest, longest permutation on every edge, and then for each triangle, you get triangles where you have B, W, not B on every edge. Then you have to split W not as a, as a product. And you will get some, some further uh, refinement of the triangle. You get some smaller triangles. And in, if you do it in some particular way, you get for venture of cluster charts. Uh, 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 can can you see this stratification on the Dalbo side? No, I think this is the main question. Hmm. That's what the fight is for. Can I ask a question? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, if you take a character variety for which you know that P equal W holds, and then maybe you start performing some rational transformation such on both sides, on Dolbo and Betty side, in such a way that on the resolution still uh, P equal W holds. But it's not clear if you do by rational transformation on the Betty side, uh, how do you get a, a transformation on the Dolbo side? I think such no, a rare. I would say maybe blow up with just one point that. But blow up, if it's algebra, it's an algebraic operation on one side. On the other side, it will be non-algebraic. But uh, I'm just, I mean, take one point that corresponds by the uh, Simpson correspondence to another point on the both sides, mm -hmm. and then just blow that, blow up that point. Ah, if you draw one point. Yeah. Maybe. And, and maybe take it on, in, on the nilpotent cone so that uh, it will correspond to low perversity. 
so middle, I mean, uh, which uh, since you blow up one point, mm -hmm. then you have the cohomology of a projective space that should correspond to low weight also. So I think that in that way, T equals W should also. Could you still obtain a, a, a cell decomposition in that way, or your cell decomposition is really attached to the character variety? You need a modular interpretation. I know some examples when you can blow up on the Hitchin side and you get, and again, you get a moduli space of Higgs bundle. So, but, you, but on the character variety side, this blow up map will be not algebraic. So, um, well, here is just a blow up. I'm, I'm not saying that there exists a lift of the Simpson correspondence, but topologically, the two space, uh, they may be still uh, diffeomorphic by uh, another diffeomorphism that is not the Simpson correspondence for a lift of it. I mean, it will be blocked topologically, but... Yeah, precisely. But you cannot control the weight filtration if it's not algebraic map. Well, but it, it will, I mean, it will be a, a, an algebraic blow up on the Betty side. No. And another, an algebraic blow up on the each side. There is no map mm. between the two a priori, maybe just topological. Yes, yeah, similarly to what you had before you did blow up, yeah, you, they are also only diffeomorphic. Yeah. Then you do algebraic, if I understand Mirka correctly, yeah. you, you do algebraic blow ups on the Delbo on the Betty side, and they are related, but not, of course, by something algebraic or even analytic, but only topological. Yeah, I, I don't know. This is kind of maybe, maybe we can talk, uh, you can explain examples when this happens, but this um, I haven't seen this. And another thing is, what happens when uh, you don't uh, have the genericity assumption? Could you get uh, <laughs> what nilpotent or still semi-simple? Uh, even semi-simple. Hmm. Even, even the identity, if you want. Anton, by the Dolbo side, do you mean the situation where you can compute your invariant in terms of uh, cohomology of a vector bundle over a Hilbert scheme? I'm sorry, this is the second question, or yeah, it's I don't think it's related, but oh, okay, okay, yeah, but for identity, you don't have smooth variety. Am I correct? So one point is that everything you you've done, you've done with a smooth variety which is sort of generalized. No, I mean, you, no, you can still get the cell decomposition. And hard left shots? This yeah, but then it's not clear how to think about it. But where are you using the smoothness? Is the Tom isomorphous? Is, is there some other no, place? I think that's not insane. No, you can do on, on singular things, just There will be some nasty. Yeah, but I don't know. To, to this kind of my, my original question: If you have sort of a decomposition on the pieces which you can motive, motives of which you can compute, what's the problem? With yeah, no, there's um, there's no problem from this point of view. Yeah. Ah, but your previous question: What I didn't say it is that. I do this cell decomposition not in the most general case. I need at least one puncture with a regular semi-simple monodromy. Then there is some other mm -hmm. argument which allows to deduce general statement from this one by deformation. But this, uh, this argument uses a Springer action and it doesn't preserve any cell decomposition. So uh, it's somehow hmm. non So you need this regular semi simple point like to make it to GL1. That's one. That's you know that's how you get to rank one if you no, I need at least I need I need at least one boundary marked with B and for that you need uh, 
regular. I was asking about the, the singular case because there are some computation of E polynomials in the singular case. In that case, they are not palindromic. So I was wondering whether your insight can explain why there is mm. not. I think there will be some correction to polyndromicity, but you can trace it. I don't know. Uh, again, let's. You, you were saying something with compact support lead cohomology. It's not better to use the intersection homology in that case. But for me, I need I need this long exact sequences. That's why I need. I see. Uh, Anton, do you understand the, the Q contribution to the affine part? So your, your strata have this tori part and then this affine part, right? And you're looking at compactly supported cohomology. So I assume your affine part contributes? Nothing. No, it doesn't contribute to the At all? At all. It's just some, some weight, overall uh, shift and weight, weight shift. Yeah, like left at motive. We but that depends on your strata, right? The shift will be different for different strata. Right, but so so it's, it happens that in this for this Lefschetz property, they all match together with the same shift. Somehow it all shifted correctly. I see. So you're saying all of, even though the well the, the affine piece though has different dimension for different strata, right? Yeah, th this has exactly correct dimension for my purpose. And all oh, right, and this is right. So, this, so I mean, okay, maybe actually this is what is different for the non-smooth case. The shifts maybe will mess. Up. Yeah, I, I haven't looked at it. Okay. Also, Leof asked a question, yeah, but yeah. somehow was postponed. Yeah, lower. Yes, uh, I'm sorry, but my question was, what is the Dolbo side? Is that the side where you have, where you compute things in terms of uh, homology of homology of a Biafra bundle over Hilbert scheme? No, no, no. It's it's the monthly space of Hitch, of, of Higgs bundles. This is Hitchin system. That that's which side? That's the Dolbo side. Yeah, it's like Simpson terminology. Higgs bundles is Dalbo, bundles with connections is Deram, and character varieties is Betty. Just kind of words. Okay. Could you explain how you get this uh, conjugacy classes in you in the diagram? So you have all this conjugacy class CI and like how do you think about them? Um, so in the end, so, okay, so for this procedure, you, you can see the thing that sea ice vary when you cut the surface and so on. But then in the end, when you prescribe monodromy around each boundary component, you are prescribing a monodromy around each boundary components of the cover. So that's, that's how it corresponds. So that the sigma hat will be unramified over the boundary. And uh, so the um, eigenvalues will give you the monodromy or data of, for the rank one local system on the cover. Mm. Does it answer your question or? I guess. So I guess you have a map to the product of Borel's on the, for each boundary component. Uh, and then you take pre-image of some of the special point corresponding to conjugacy class or? I mean, this MB sigma hat GL1, sigma hat has a boundary. So there is a map to MB of boundary of sigma hat GL1, right? Mm -hmm. And there is this map. Mm -hmm. So fixing the, the eigenvalues means fixing point here. Okay. 
the boundary of of uh, M, a boundary of of Z of sigma the boundary of sigma is boundary of sigma tilde is just n copies of the boundary of of sigma. But there you have GLN, it becomes GL1. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. Uh, Jenny, are you happy with the answer? Yeah, I'm happy. Yeah. All right, uh, more questions? Um, let's give kind of <laughs> ten, ten, 10 seconds to people to rip. but so you you do not kind of you do not have this more general picture when you have uh, a Fukaya categories uh, of, of symplectic surfaces maybe partially compactified instead of character varieties which are sort of constructible shifts. You, you do not think in these terms, correct? I, um, so one thing that if you have a, suppose you have a surface and for each boundary component you have a, a positive braid. Let's suppose you have a positive braid associated to each boundary component. Then you can associate some moduli space, which I would I was to think as the, the correct moduli space. Uh, yeah, 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 I understand. So it's it's indeed it's still constructible shift story. What I mean, it's sort of a little bit more, more general. I mean, I had this idea about p equal w for more general mm, case and just uh, Higgs bundles and 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 character varieties. So there is kind of, for, for that you need to take a, a cotangent bundle to, to your surface with punctures, uh, partially compactified at, at, at infinity, like fiber-wise compactified, and to do some blow-ups at, at the intersection of these finitely many uh, fibers. So this yeah. is what you do when you have meromorphic connection, right? Uh, yeah, that's what I do when I have meromorphic. Well, call of order one, it's a little bit misleading, but you also think in this term. So then you have kind of just one mm, Poisson surface with a big symplectic, open symplectic leaf, and you can kind of formulate everything in these terms. At least ask a question. Yeah. I, I should get acquainted with this language, is what you're doing, but... Yeah, okay, my, 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 maybe we'll kind of talk about that. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, more questions? Yeah. Well, if there are no more questions, but thank Anton for a very, very interesting talk. Thank you.